Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going through some easy tricks you can use in your platformer to make it better. I will split this video in two in order to keep it short. Some of these tricks I consider essential for a good experience, while others are just a nice to have. Some of them are not exclusive to platformers and can be applied in other types of game as well. So let's get started. I've prepared here a project with what I consider to be a bad platformer. It uses a finite state machine from my other video, links in the description. And as you can see here, the movement and jump feel very robotic and the input responsiveness is not ideal. I see this kind of implementation in game gens all the time and sometimes the other mechanics of the game are really good but the platform aspects are really bad. Trick number one, acceleration. In the example we are using here, we have instantaneous acceleration, meaning that the player will hit top speed as soon as he presses a key, and will stop as soon as he releases the key. This kind of approach can work if the top speed is not too high and the art style allows, but generally, Having a constant acceleration to reach top speed is a good idea. The higher the acceleration in relationship with the top speed, the more snappy the movement will feel. If you take Celeste, for example, Madeline has a run acceleration of a thousand and a top speed of 90. So if you do the math, it means she will hit top speed in 0.09 seconds, which is about five frames and a half if we consider a physics of 60 frames per second, and it takes a whopping four pixels to reach that speed. This might look like it's not a big deal, but trust me, it is. Let's implement this in our example. First thing, I will go to the player, and I will add here a constant, and let's call it acceleration. And let's give it a value of 1000 like Madeline, and let's have the jump speed, the max speed, sorry, to be 90. Then we're going to move over here on the update velocity method, and we're going to change how we set the X. So we're going to use the move towards function. This takes a float, take velocity X, and it moves the first value to the second that we are giving. And it does this by using the delta provided. So we're going to use acceleration times delta. And that should be enough. Now, if you hit play, you can see that it is not instantaneous. We have some frames to reach top speed, and as soon as we let it go, it takes a few frames to stop. So this feels much better. There we have it. You can play with the values. Uh, for example, if we reduce the acceleration, the character will feel slippery. So for example, let's hit this, this to a hundred. And if you play it again, you can see that it takes some time to reach max speed and it takes some time to stop. Kind of have an effect that we are walking on ice. So you can play with these values as you wish. I will get back to 8000. Another idea on this subject is to have a different acceleration to stop. So for example, you can get the feeling of the zero to top speed acceleration and maintain the top speed to zero short distance that allows for a better control. This is a bit more advanced and includes some quarter cases that I will not approach in this video, but it's an idea you can play with. Now let's get to trick number two, variable jump height. This is in my opinion, the worst offender in this list. The idea here is to allow the player to control how high the jump will be if the player releases the jump key while jumping, 
we allow for a shorter jump. If the player keeps the jump key pressed all the way through the jump, we will reach the max jump height possible. This concept really gives a polished feeling to the controls. Here's one way to implement it. Let's head over to the jump and let's create a variable here. Let's call this variable variable jump height. And when we enter the jump, we're going to say variable jump height is equals to false. And here in the physics update, we're going to be doing if variable jump height. We're going to negate that, say we don't have variable jump height. And object dot get jump hold. And we're going to negate that as well. So if we're not holding the jump key, uh, there are different ways of doing this. I will reduce the, the velocity by half. You're just going to divide by two. But you can apply a different kind of acceleration. You can set velocity y to zero directly. So you go straight into the fall. But I think that just cutting in, in half makes a good smooth transition. So we're going to say object dot velocity dot y. Like so. And we're going to set variable jump high as true so we don't cut the velocity more than one time now we're gonna head back to the player and we need to add this function that we just used get jump hold and we're gonna say input dot is action pressed and the jump input if we hit play we should be able to control how high the jump is. If we keep it pressed, it jumps higher. If we do it like this, and this feels so much better. All right, trick number three, input buffer. This concept can be used across different types of games. It consists on remembering a key press for a short time and using that key press if conditions are met. In a simple example, what happens if our player tries to jump just before hitting the ground? Let's take a look. Nothing. And this feels unresponsive. The player clearly pressed a button, but was just a few frames off. We can fix this by remembering the key press for a while and performing the jump as we hit the ground. Here's one way to implement this. I'm going to add to the player a timer. And I'm going to call this timer jump buffer timer. And you're going to say it's one shot and we're going to give a wait time of 0.1 that is more or less six frames now here in the player we're going to use that let's get a, a variable here to jump buffer timer as opposed to jump buffer timer And now, here in the physics process, we're just going to check if get jump input. We're going to say this dot start, which means that on every physics frame, when we get jump input, that is when we actually press the jump we are going to start the timer so we can remember it later now let's go to the fall state and here we have this condition when we hit the floor we are going to change to run or idle depending on the 
x input but let's do a small check first here let's say object dot jump input buffer is stopped and we need to negate that so if this timer is ticking we're gonna change state to jump otherwise we're gonna do what we are doing and then on the jump state whenever we enter the jump state we're gonna call that jump timer and we're gonna stop it so we don't enter some weird loop where we start jumping over and over and now hitting the play I can jump if I press the jump button right before touching the ground and this feels very responsive this allows the player to do like this span jump and it feels very good well that's it for this video leave a comment with your guess on what are the tricks i have reserved for part two and i see you guys on the next one bye